And I have to warn you, as we were talking about, this might be Rumorville, so I'm not sure, but it's something I found to be really interesting and worthy of talking about. Hop in here. So you just did tires on this bike, <clears throat> and you can see here the axle orientation where this hole is facing up. And what that hole's for is where you'd put like a screwdriver in it and then just kind of sneak around the side here. And then use your torque wrench to tighten up the axle. Okay, so you're going to support it here and tighten it up. And I have have not seen anywhere in any manuals where they talk about any directions for the orientation of this, this axle hole, if you will. Nothing in there doesn't matter because wherever you hold it, you still should be able to torque it. <clears throat> I'm in the habit of having it forward just for the simple fact that I don't like to do this because what a lot of technicians will do is they'll go ahead and start to tighten the axle, the screwdriver will hit the fork leg, and then they're using the fork leg as a holder to tighten the axle. And that's a big no-no. A lot of these are chrome or clear coated, and we should not be putting anything up against this as a support because we're just going to damage uh, or blemish the, uh, the top coat there, if you will, right? So for me, it made sense to just do it this way, but here's where it's funny. So this is the part of the story that gets to be interesting. <clears throat> the rumor I heard, and if any YouTubers out there have a fact, have a service bulletin number or something, I would love to see this or have a copy of it. But apparently, uh, in the Harley world, there was uh, some complaints for some years where through the front end of their bagger motorcycles, customers were saying that they were hearing, they were describing it in weird ways, a rattle, a whistle, a humming, um, you know, customers come with all these different descriptions. The, the mechanic would go test ride the bike and go, yeah, you know, I kind of hear something in there. So the assumption would be, well, something must be loose. So they're disassembling these bat wing fairings and checking like the stereo mounts and speakers and windshields and all stuff and triple tree bolts and all the things that we think could come loose, headlights, and they're not finding anything. They're putting them back together and saying, well, we couldn't find anything. Go back out and the problem would, uh, would still be there, they just couldn't figure it out. And then sometimes the problem would show itself during a tire service. And so the great thing about the OEMs that a lot of people take for granted is they take all this information and they, they database it. They want to fix these things, right? If there's an annoyance or something, they're taking a look at it. The reason this one was hard was I believe that you know at the factory, you have trained people that have an understanding that you would never put a screwdriver against a fork leg. You just would never do that. So on the assembly line, you can imagine that they would come in like this, support this, torque it, and that axle hole would always be forward facing, right? So if you go look at factory motorcycles, you probably see that. Now, once again, in a metric vehicle, I had never seen any orientation either. So when I heard this story, it really had my, my curiosity raised up because I was thinking, what is the deal? So the story is this, somebody at Harley or somewhere figured out <coughs> that what was happening is by having that hole facing up, you were getting this. The wind was coming across it, resonating into the, you know, the chassis up in the fairing, and then <coughs> by the time he got to the rider, they were hearing this whistle. Now where it made a lot of sense is the tone would change with how fast you were riding the motorcycle. So we did a little bit of experiment in here. I don't know if the video is going to be able to catch this, but even without the fairing and stuff, we tried to see if we could get it to whistle. I could hold this real steady. I could find a place that that wind going across there can obviously create that whistle. So this is us just kind of screwing around. Thought, wow, that's, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, a few years ago when I heard this story, we talk about this all the time. We talk about our checklists and our, our human air and stuff like this. You know what I just started doing? Hmm. On every bike that I work on that has this style of axle, just face it out. Just face it forward for sure. Now, what I realized it wasn't taking any effort because my muscle memory was already doing that anyway from the way that I tightened. But I really started to pay attention to it. So ever since then, I, I saw this. I just started to. Uh, notice it more and I love it. I love these stories. I love this part of being a mechanic and the curiosity of things that we could connect the dots and I uh, wanted to share that with you out there on YouTube and you guys with the class as well. I think it's a pretty cool story. And once again, if anybody knows or has actual factual information if that really did happen at Harley or knows of a service bulletin, I'd love to get that into uh, the curriculum and, and share it to the rest of the world on the right way to do it. Um, be interesting to look at new service manuals and see if they specify a direction on that. So anyway, that's it. That's our tip of the day for every mechanic should know. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future.
Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.